So in this episode, we're gonna be looking at Halation, and I'm gonna show you how to set it up properly, how to use it in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm gonna show you two different ways. I'm gonna show you using the Halation tool itself, which was the new plugin that came with version 17.4, and I'm also gonna show you a third-party plugin called Dehancer, which has a really good Halation section built into it. It's a film emulation plugin. So I'm gonna take a look at both of those, and first of all, let me just I'll quickly explain to you what Halation is. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there that explain it in more detail, but it's basically, if you look at this image here, you can see that it's basically a visual effect that appears on film. So we're trying to recreate it here digitally, but it's basically when the light bounces back off the anti-halation layer, when it enters the camera, and you get this red sort of orange halo in areas of high contrast. So, and often you'll get a bit of a red glare on mid-tones, so maybe skin tones and things like that. It's often seen in bright light sources. So I've really been playing with both of these halation tools quite extensively, and to find out which one I prefer, you can have to wait till later in this episode. So let's go and take a look at uh, at how it works and how to set it up. But before that, I just want to explain that halation is a very subtle tool. The art of getting halation looking good is it is incredibly subtle. So it's quite hard to show that on YouTube. So what I'm going to do is slightly exaggerate all the movements to start with. And then at the end, I will show you a proper before and after with a few more subtle settings. So let's go and take a look. So I've got a series of clips on my timeline ready to start grading. In fact, I've already started some work on these. So this shot here, really nice shot for applying halation because we've got lots of nice highlights everywhere and it's good clean footage. And this footage has come from ArtGrid. So they're not sponsoring this video, just for clarity, but there are some affiliate links in the description. So if you click on those, you can get two months free subscription to Artlist and ArtGrid. And it's basically a stock footage site, stock video footage site. It does music as well, but what I like is you can access the log file, so it's not necessarily graded footage. So let me just show you. I'm going to reset this. So here's our clip of this guy eating his breakfast, and what we're going to do is have a look at the color management settings. So down here in my color management, you'll see that I'm in DaVinci YRGB, and I'm in Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So I'm not using effectively a color managed workflow. My color managed workflow comes from using CST. So I've used in the past, in previous videos, my fixed node tree, and I have a color space transform sat somewhere around the middle, which can take me from whichever camera space I'm in into my display space, which in this case is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. If you don't understand color management, don't worry about it at all. Basically what you need to do is forget the CSTs, forget the color management side of it. You just need to get this first node looking much better balanced than this. So I suggest you have a look at probably offset and maybe uh, lift and gain and probably whack a bit of saturation in there and you'll be good to go, certainly for the purpose of this exercise to get you working with halation. However, if you do understand color space transforms, then I'm gonna reset that single node, we've got absolutely nothing going on here at all. I'm gonna add two more nodes at the beginning. And my third node there is gonna be for my color space transform. So this is gonna take me out of the red color space that we're in into my display space, which is a Rec. 2.4. So let's just go to my effects here. And these are some of my favorites in here. So it's, that's why this list looks a little bit shorter. And just so you know, by the way, the Halation tool is studio only. You need the full version of DaVinci Resolve in order to use it. You can use it, but it'll be watermarked, obviously. So there we go. So I'm gonna change my input color space, red wide gamma RGB. And my input gamma is gonna be red log 3G10. Okay, so that's got me into a really nice state to start working. And what I'm gonna do on these two nodes, I would normally have many more nodes than this, but just for the episode on halation, I'm gonna do my balance and exposure stuff on these first two nodes, okay? So first node here, let's go straight down to offset. I'm gonna use my panel, just because it's quicker and more accurate and I prefer it. And I'm just gonna just lift and gain there. I'm keeping an eye on those scopes at the same time and we're pretty good there let me just check the actual clip there so let's have his skin tone as a reference here and on this side we can have a look at just maybe cooling this off a little bit so i'm just going to get to my offset and cool it off just a little bit maybe just have a look at what color temperature is doing i think it was good as it was all right so we've got a good starting point there ready to start our halation now where are we gonna put halation? Now I've done quite a lot of research on this and 
halation is typically, obviously, is, is at the acquisition side, okay? So when you're shooting on film, it's the, the light is coming in and it bounces a little bit off that um, anti-halation backing layer that you have, and that's what's causing this effect. So it's actually there to start with. So you would think really that the best place to put the halation would be right at the start, but I've been playing with this and I'm getting better results when it's after the color space transform. In fact, I'm actually getting better results when it's right at the end of my node tree, pretty much. I might do a vignette after that, um, possibly grain, but I'm getting really good effects right at the end. And this also keeps things like my keys clean and just, I don't know, I'm just getting much better results with it at the end. So I'm gonna go after my color space transform. In fact, let's just label these up so we don't get confused. That's my color space transform. These two are balance and exposure and offset. And I'm gonna add a, another node after this. So just to clarify, I would normally have maybe five, six, seven, eight nodes going on here that have some window shapes going on, but this, let's just get this going on the halation. Now, I'm gonna show you two different types of halation, as I mentioned. The first one, we're gonna use DaVinci Resolve's one built into the Resolve effects. All right, this is with the studio version. So it's down here, it's called halation. Let's just drag and drop that on and immediately, you've got some settings coming in, okay? So if I just literally enable and disable that, it's actually working already. You can see that happening on the scopes. And let's see if we can actually see some halation in the image already. So let's go to a better mode. I'm gonna press Shift and F, and that takes me into a much larger screen so you'll be able to see what's going on with the halation. And I keep my halation settings open. And in fact, what I'm gonna do, just to keep it clear, I can show you my node tree. Now let's just label that up just to be clear. So our halation node. And you can see by default, it's already doing something. If I just disable and enable that node, you can see here, we've got halation going on here. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see better. And so we've got our nice bit of halation happening just in these areas of high contrast, up here particularly. And we can clearly see that the red is being affected as well. Now the color space we're in at the top here, is currently set to the timeline. So it's Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. But I can actually set this to work in a larger color space. And that's just gonna give me much more scope for playing around with these tools. So let's just change that now to DaVinci Wide Gamut. Or I could change it to um, red settings. But I'm gonna go to DaVinci Wide Gamut because that's, that's about the largest color space that there is. And you see straight away that red looks a little bit better than it's just taken out a bit of the heat off that. So I'm gonna keep these slightly exaggerated so that YouTube can show you what's going on just in case it compresses it too much. But basically we've got our first section here, which is isolation. Now that is determining what part of the image is gonna have halation affected or not. So it's pretty straightforward. So the threshold is basically the black levels. Let me just go to a full image for you again. So the further down here we go, the more is included. Obviously we wanna keep this pretty restricted. So I'm just gonna go around about there. And there's a little bit of pushing and pulling of all these sliders to get the optimum halation, but let's, let's keep going. And the normalization is obviously gonna work out our high threshold. So as we pull down from here, you'll see that our highlights become included up here. All right, so that's not looking too great. So let's pull that back again. Okay. And the film saturation level is used for allowing us to increase the brightness through HDR. So obviously when we're moving up into six, 700 nits or whatever scale we're going up to, this film saturation level allows us to increase those highlights. So the next section, dial layer reflections, is showing us how the halation is reflected. So we've got several different tools down here to work with. Strength is pretty obviously gonna show us the strength of that halation. Again, I'm gonna just zoom in here. Let's see if there's anything else happening, actually. Let's just move through the shot. Obviously, remember, with moving shots, when you're working with things like halation, you really need to be playing that shot back time after time, just making sure that nothing strange is happening. Okay, so I'm hoping to get a bit of halation off his glasses, and there's a little bit happening there. If I just zoom in, I'm gonna to have to zoom in and out all the time on this episode but there, and let's just take that on and off. So gamma is really about the spread of that halation. You can see that changing there in his glasses. Saturation is the sort of intensity of the color of that, obviously. Let's just zoom that up a little bit. And if I go there and then desaturate, it goes white. So we're losing the actual color of the halo. And what spread is doing is emulating the light reflecting off the anti-halation backing and it's 
emulating how far through the red, green, and blue elements of the film it's, it's actually attracting. So as I move this up, you should see that start to go cooler. Yeah, so it's starting to go green, pull it back, and it goes a little bit warmer again. So that's spread. So I'm gonna keep that low, and I'm gonna keep my saturation up, and I'm gonna bring my gamma down, because I want that really subtle in there. Okay, even that's too much. I'm gonna bring it back in a moment. So the secondary glow section is about bloom. So when light hits film stock, you generally get a little bit of blooming happening as well. So it's kind of like a glow effect. So if I bring this up, you'll see that by default, everything is switched off because it's got zero bloom, or secondary glow, I should call it. And as I increase that, you can see it happening here. In fact, if I move down, let's go to that, this here, or even his shirt here, you can see that happening a lot clearer. I'm gonna just exaggerate it so you can see what's going on. All right, so this would be super subtle in my mind. I mean, I would hardly be touching this at all, if at all. So gamma is increasing the spread of that secondary glow, and spread is determining which part of the highlight is affected. And the filter here, you can actually adjust this and change its color. So I'm just gonna go extreme here and show you, but you can actually change the color of that effect as well. So I'm gonna cancel that. Let's keep it neutral white. And down here, then basic grain. So the basic grain, obviously, we're trying to emulate film here, so there would be some film grain element in there. So this is some of the basic grain settings from Resolve's own film grain feature. So you can append grain internally. Now you can see a nice bit of grain coming in. And obviously strength, size, softness, saturation speak for themselves. I'm gonna take that off just for now. And then down here, we've got our global adjustments. So we can actually view where our halation is occurring. And again, make sure you play the footage through to check. I wanna make sure I get a nice bit on his glasses. So I'm just gonna go back to fit. So shift Z will do that, by the way. And you can see here, we've actually got quite a lot of heavy halation going on. There's his, the rim of his glasses. So I'm gonna take that back. And now let's make it a bit more subtle. So I've shown you what the sliders do, but let's just knock it all back a little bit. So globally, I can adjust my, that sort of haloing that I'm getting from the halation. Aspect ratio allows me, if you're working with anamorphics, you can actually change the aspect ratio of the shape of the halo that you're getting. A little bit hard to show you in here. And detail loss is an element uh, to, again, film emulation where you would lose a little bit of uh, detail in the image. So you can literally just show extreme, obviously that is extreme, but you can just pull out a little bit of the detail in there. Again, to just give you that nice film emulation. So let me just have a look and what's going on in the rest of this image. Okay, and this is too extreme for me, so I'm gonna pull that whole thing back. Let's just take our threshold down a little bit. Up here. I just want it to be really subtle. That's quite nice there. So let's just play that clip back. Let's do it in full screen, actually. So Command F, play that back. And that's looking really nice there. Okay, I think it's probably still a little bit strong on his glasses here, so I'd probably knock that back a little bit. But it gives you a good insight into DaVinci Resolve's own built-in halation tool. So let's have a look at the halation in Dehancer. So I've taken off the node that we just did for the DaVinci Resolve halation. I'm gonna add a brand new one. And these are my favorites here. I've got Dehancer Pro 5.3.0 down here. Now that has just been released today. I have been using Dehancer for a little while, but uh, 5.3 came out today. So that has now got, it's much better film grain in there effectively, but I will cover Dehancer in another episode. This is just about halation. So by default, you can see when I throw it on, it actually does quite a lot. There's, there's film grain in here, there's all sorts of stuff going on. And that is because Dehancer Pro is not just halation. So the Dehancer model is you can buy the Pro version, which has all the different film emulation things that you're gonna need. So you've got film stock in there, you've got film grain, you've got weave, breathe, that sort of stuff. You can buy each of those as individual elements, including halation. So if you just wanted halation, you can go to the Dehancer website and just buy that pack. At the minute it's $99. Or you can buy Dehancer Pro, which has all of the packs in one hit. So I'm just gonna use the halation element from here. And by the way, they're not sponsoring this video, but you can get a discount on any of the Dehancer plugins if you go to the checkout and type in Darren10, so that's D-A-R-R-E-N, capital letters, number 10, and you will get a 10% discount.
So let's have a look at what it does. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to take off all the extra stuff that's in here. So let's get rid of the film emulation there, the film print, sorry. Let's get rid of this expand. Let's get rid of this print. Let's get rid of the color heads. Definitely get rid of the film grain. And you see halation here is not actually on, but it will be in a minute. We've got a bloom, separate bloom area here. And we've got vignetting. These are all off now. So the gate weave is off as well. So we've only got halation applied. Now, just before I go anywhere, at the top here, you also can see that we can change our input source. So our source at the minute is Rec 709, and that's because this is sitting after my CST. So I want it to be in Rec 709. But you could, if you didn't use a CST, you could actually use Dehancer Pro as your color management. So you could go down here and you could choose either the camera. So I could type in my, uh, my red settings in there, or you could just choose uh, DaVinci Wide Gamut if you prefer. So I'm gonna stick on Rec 709 because that is the input that this is expecting. I'm gonna to go to my halation down here. And by default, it's actually put a little bit of halation on as soon as I press enabled. So there we go. I saw the scope just lift up a little bit then. I'm gonna disable and enable that. You can see that moving. And obviously it's moving the red highlights up, which is what I'd expect because halation is putting a sort of red, a red halo around our highlighted areas. But it's also affecting on Dehancer by default, a little bit of skin tone in here. So if I have a look, we've still got our same balance exposure and offset that we had with the DaVinci Resolve halation, but this one is giving us a slightly different look. And if I just zoom in, let's go a bit more than 100%, sorry. Let's go right in. I hope you can see this on YouTube, but if I enable and disable that, I don't think you're gonna be able to see it, but it is giving a slightly different uh, look to the skin tone and that's actually a typical property of film halation some of the mid-tones would be affected as well so this is actually good emulation by default let's switch that back on so I tend to start with these two sliders here local diffusion and global diffusion global diffusion is allowing for less than highlights to come in so it's more creeping into your mid-tones so how much of this face do I want to be included and as I bring that up you can see it getting more and more halation Effect. So it's not the halo effect, it's a kind of red glow on the midtone. Now, the local diffusion here is affecting the amount that you see there. So it's getting stronger, you can see it on the glasses. So it's the amount of the halo. So the more I bring this down, the less of the halo effect. Now to see the halo effects, we need to go onto a slightly different part of this image. Remember, always looking through your shot. So let's go, I want to find the bit where that sugar pot was, which is there. Okay, so now if I go to the local diffusion, you can see that we get that a little bit more refined. So that's a little bit more what I'd expect from the halo effect. Uh, the source limiter is literally cutting off brighter sources. So as I bring that up, less is included. Obviously at 100% there is nothing included. You're effectively not applying halation. So we can control at which point halation starts to kick in in terms of brightness levels. The background gain, what this does is halos generally appear on areas of high contrast. So you've got highlight and dark. And the background gain allows me to adjust how dark the image has to be to include a halo. So as I move background gain down, only the really dark areas would be included with halation. So you can see that now the halation's almost gone. So I need to bring that back up a bit. So it's basically saying how contrasty does it have to be to have a halo or halation effect in there. So smoothness is affecting the actual halo itself. And the amplify section here is, is talking about the amplification of the light, the emulation of the light hitting the anti-halation layer and feeding back through the film. So the film is obviously hitting the red layer first, the green layer second, and the blue layer after that. So the more it amplifies, the more green and then the more blue you get. So let's have a look at that. So bring that up and down, you can see it's, its intensity and its color is slightly changing. And you can actually change the hue here as well. So I can actually change the color of the halo. And down here, this blue compensation here is if you've got halation sitting on a cooler background, so it's, it's more, more blues in the background, you can adjust, obviously then the halo will look a little bit more green. So you can adjust that using the blue compensator here. And impact is literally opacity of it. So how much halation do you want? Or how less. So let's have a look at the whole image here. And let's just check all of it. I want to check that his glasses have got a nice little kick on them. And maybe check these up here, these highlights up here. 
So there it is. I'm just going to switch this on and off. And they are indeed being affected. And we've got this real nice glow in his face. And that is a very nice halation. So once you finish with the halation, you would then move on to the other elements such as bloom and film grain to get this film emulation looking just right. But this is really just about halation this episode. Obviously the DaVinci Resolve one has a little bit of film grain built in and you've got the sort of tools that would do subtle blooming. So just be aware of that if you are looking at Dehancer. Dehancer Pro includes everything. So in a moment, I'm gonna play a couple of clips from the timeline with the Dehancer halation and the DaVinci Resolve halation so you can see them for yourselves. These are subtle. These have been set to how I would set halation. So I do hope they come across on YouTube, but they may not. So if you've enjoyed this, please subscribe, hit the like button. I spent a long time preparing this to make sure that you got a good insight into how these two fantastic tools work. I'm sure you'll agree that they are giving really good film emulation of the halation. Check out in the description, you've got two free months there with the links to Artgrid and Artlist, which is where I got all this footage from. Don't forget the beauty of this is I, I can work with the log of the footage as well. There is 10% discount on Dehancer, so you can get Dehancer Pro or any of the individual plugins from Dehancer. Darren 10, capital letters, gives you 10%. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode. So I guess the question is, which one do I prefer using? Both of these tools are absolutely fantastic. The, the DaVinci Resolve Halation, drag and drop it on, you're gonna get good results straight away. I suggest you just knock it back a little bit. It can be a little bit harsher in its starting point than the Dehancer one. But overall, I've gotta say the Dehancer one just has the edge for me. It's just slightly more subtle. It gives a much more pleasing look. Obviously the disadvantage of that, you've got to buy it. I suggest that just buying it on its own wouldn't be enough. You'd probably want a little bit of bloom in there. So you might want to look at the pro version. But in my opinion, the Dehancer one does just have the edge. The DaVinci Resolve Halation is obviously a very welcome addition because it's saving us building up four or five different nodes to create that halation look. Both of them fantastic. Uh, but for me, the Dehancer one does just have the edge. So um, there you go.